I want to bring in retired four-star General Jack Keane on this. Uh, General, I get the impression that Hamas is trying to take advantage of Senator Schumer's call for new elections in Israel to get rid of Netanyahu. I think that's what's got a lot to do with the timing of this, cease, of this uh, proposal. What do you say? Well, yeah, it, it's that and a number of things. First of all, they do believe they have the wind at their back as the international condemnation of Israel for its behavior, you know, has obviously increased. We now have the president of the United States publicly uh, criticizing Israel and, and Senator Schumer's statement uh, yesterday. This proposal was likely made before that. But nonetheless, they know full well that there's opposition to Israel in the United States government. And what Hamas has put on the table is not all that different than what was on the table a month ago. And the two things that Israel will certainly object to is a permanent ceasefire. In other words, stop the war as it exists right now and withdraw completely from the Gaza Strip. Uh, th that is an unrealistic proposal using their words, and that will not be accepted. But nonetheless, Israel is willing to negotiate and get down to hopefully something that is more reasonable, Stuart. Different subject for a second, General. The president's defense budget includes only a 1% increase from last year. China is increasing military spending 7%. Is our 1% increase enough, General? No, it's not even close. I'm I mean, with inflation, it's actually a reduction because inflation is sitting around 3 4%. Uh, and that's the reality of it. All four of Biden's budget proposals have been a reduction, not, not an increase, which is absolutely staggering when you had just this week all of his intelligence chiefs came before the Congress of the United States and said in so many words, our adversaries, global adversaries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea, they have increased their aggression, and it's the danger we're facing. We haven't seen anything like this in decades to include transnational extremism like ISIS, etc. No mention of the scale of the danger in the State of the Union to set the stage for the American people to deal with this. And so in this defense budget is really inadequate. When our adversaries look at us, Stuart, here's what they see. Hmm. Weakness in terms of our national leadership, politically dysfunctional, and we can see that in the Congress of the United States, lack of social cohesion, and then the part we're talking about here, a United States military who hasn't recovered from the 9-11 war and is not as good as it used to be, despite all the protestations that we are. The fact, fact is, we are losing ground to China in a very rapid fashion. They have more ships, more airplanes, more offensive, defensive missiles than we have. They're finally developing the kind of silent submarines that, that we have. Yes, we don't have to go platform to platform, but the fact is the Army is going to be the smallest it's been since prior to World War II. The Air Force is, is at, going to be at a 40-year low. The Navy is trying to get the 355 platforms as an objective state. This budget takes it down below 290. Makes no sense whatsoever the direction we're going. And we're going in the wrong direction, but our threats are increasing. Does it, does it, is it a national security risk? Is that what we're talking about here? You deflate the military to such a point that we've got a, a, a security risk? Yeah, you're absolutely right. You put your finger on what the real problem is, because if our adversaries right. don't see us in the same light that they used to, and we lose our ability to deter them from going to war, then it invites what? It invites that conflict, because they see in the United States vulnerabilities, and they're seizing the opportunity. That is why Iran has operationalized all its proxies in the Middle East. That is why Russia is inside Ukraine. They see opportunities, and they, they see opportunities beyond what we're talking about just here. Iran wants to dominate the Middle East, drive the United States out, destroy the state of Israel. Russia wants to expand into Eastern uh, Europe, similar to the countries that they used to own yeah. once before. And we know China is full intent on dominating the Indo-Pacific region. These are objectives that they talk about all the time, and they are moving in that direction. Here's another trouble spot. 
The Marines, the anti-terrorism unit, now on the ground in Haiti protecting our embassy and maybe helping evacuate personnel. Haiti is in absolute chaos again. Should our military take full control of the island? No, no, absolutely not. I, that would be, I think, a mistake. First of all, given all the threats that I just described to us, this doesn't rise to anywhere near a threat to U.S. national security the way the other threats I described do. But I do believe what we're looking at is a failed state. We've learned how to deal with something like this. The, the necessary condition to make progress is security. And I, I believe this should be a, 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 an effort by the Caribbean countries, Latin American countries. The United States should contribute our thought leadership to how to go about doing that. We have a lot of experience. Bring in a multinational force to secure and stabilize the situation. And then eventually you have the conditions set for governance for some economic improvement. But the United States military should only go in there if it needs to get our embassy people out of there safely. And that should be the end of it. Quickly, the Wall Street Journal says the military could soon use swarms of drones, hundreds at a time. Is drone warfare changing the whole nature of warfare? And how do we stand it? Are we good at it? It's not changing the nature of it, but it certainly is changing the character of warfare. And yes, we're on a path for major technological breakthrough here in terms of swarming missiles, swarming drones. Surface ships will be incredibly vulnerable, uh, as, as, as many of them are right now, in my view, just due to missiles alone. But swarming drones, you, you can't swarm them right now because you don't have the AI uh, and the kind of computers to be able to do that. But that is, we're on the cusp of that actually happening. You'll see air forces, less manned aircraft uh, for sure, pilots operating out of black boxes, controlling multiple, multiple drones uh, as a result of all of that, and, and obviously not being threatened operating out of a black box versus an airplane. That's the future. And this technology is enabling that. And AI will bring on the swarming of the, of the drones for sure. It, it, the Army just canceled a manned reconnaissance helicopter they, they invested a few billion dollars in. And they did that principally because they, can, they know full well they can accomplish the same yeah. thing by unmanned drones considerably cheaper. We're That's moving away from manned aircraft slowly, but we're moving in that direction, and we're going to move into drones dominating uh, the battlefield. So long as we're winning the technology battle, that's all I'm worried about. General, thank you very much for being with us this morning. We always appreciate it. See you soon, man. Thank you. Yeah, great talking to you, Stuart.